Hi there, so welcome back. In the previous video, we looked at the Doppler effect and just kind of got a basic intuition of, of how it works. But in this video, what I like to do is actually get into the, a little bit of the math and do a sort of a loose, not, not super rigorous, but um, a derivation of how we get that Doppler effect equation. But first, let's just kind of revisit um, where we were and what the sort of basic intuition that, um, that we hope that this, um, the derivation and the math is going to support. So let's say we've got this um, source here, and it's, it's emanating. Uh, and let's go ahead and stop it right there. So you can see since this source is moving um, in this direction that, that the wavelengths are getting tighter on this side, whereas on this side over here, they're getting, they're getting um, further apart. But if we look down here, let's go ahead and just compare a source that's stationary versus one that's moving. So um, there it's going. It's propagating. It's propagating. You can see that actually when it gets to, um, when that wave gets to this point, it's going to actually have the same wavelength up here. Like both of these, both of these are going to have that same, um, that same wavelength at the, at the top here. So let's just go ahead and draw this out and um, make sure that we're tracking on, on this. So we're going to go ahead and write la our new lambda as this um, orange here. And that is going to be less than lambda naught where, um, let's go ahead and define um, lambda naught is our um, original wavelength. And you can see that's going to be shorter here. And on this side, as we discussed, that it's going to be um, bigger than lambda naught. That's going to be because it's going to have a, a bigger wavelength over here. And if we looked at the top, um, as we saw down here, we're going to have a lambda that actually is just going to equal lambda naught. So we want to find some kind of equation that accounts for the fact that this getting, um, you know, that wavelength is getting smaller over here. It's bigger over here when that object's moving away, but it's actually the same if that object's moving perpendicular to it. Um, so let's just go ahead and just write out the, the wavelength, or just kind of kind of um, plot this out, what it looks like in general. So we got a plot here, and say we've got a full wavelength here. And this is just going to be distance along this axis. All right, and our total distance across here is going to be lambda naught. That's our original wavelength. And that's going to be equal to C divided by our original frequency. And let's go ahead and draw this out, because of course, um, C is going to be our speed of light, and F naught is going to be our original frequency. OK, so this is kind of where we're starting from. And we're trying to get to this new, this new wavelength that's sort of bunched up over here. So let's go ahead and draw this out. OK, so let's say this moved a little bit, and we got our new sort of a starting location here. And this, is gonna, this was our ending location right here. So now since that source moved, that, that wavelength's going to be scrunched up like this. You can see that new wavelength, we'll call this lambda, is shorter. Um, and it's shorter by this distance here. We'll just call that delta d. So if you wanted a basic equation for this, um, you could just subtract, you could find this new this lambda by taking this old lambda and subtracting that delta d. And what actually is that delta d? So the delta d is that, it's that distance. And distance, um, you can think about it as a velocity times a change in time. So that, and that velocity is going to be the velocity of our objects. Delta d is, is going to be the speed of our source multiplied by that time, it, that time it takes to move that distance. And that time, we're just looking at one period here. Uh, we'll just write that out. It's a period. So we can come up with this new equation here um, where our lambda is going to equal lambda naught, which I'm just going to go ahead and change this lambda naught to C over F naught as, um, as we defined it above. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract this. So we've got the speed of our source which um, let's just call that V, and I'll write it up here. So we got V, and then we got our period, which um, that period is just, is just going to be 1 over our frequency. So it's just V times 1 over F naught. So this is our um, equation and we could for, for lambda, but we could also solve this for um, frequency, because we've got F naught in here, and it's kind of odd to have you know, this frequency in here, but, but have this lambda here. And oftentimes, the frequency is, is more of what you're interested in. So let's go ahead and solve for that. And to do that, I'm just going to say that this lambda is going to be equal to C over F. 
where f is our new frequency. So let's, um, let's go ahead and move this up here. So we've got um, c over f. And that's going to be equal to c over f naught minus v over f naught. So we can kind of combine this into one, and we can just call that um, c minus v over f naught. And now, if we want to solve for f, we just go ahead and invert both sides of this, and we can just say that f over c is equal to f naught over c minus v. And then we can multiply both sides by c. So we just got some basic algebra here, and we're getting closer. So f is equal to f naught times c over c minus v. And um, this is maybe the, the trickiest step here, and it's just um, how we go from um, getting having the c minus v on the bottom to having it on top. Because typically, it's just better to have a subtraction like this or an addition in the numerator rather than the denominator, just typically easier to work with. So we're just going to invoke a little bit of a, of a math trick here. And this math trick is assuming that our velocity is going to be much less than c, which um, we our assumption in this case is that the velocity of the object is much less than the speed of light. If it, if it was close to the speed of light, we'd have relativistic effects to take into account, and this derivation doesn't, doesn't really hold. But for lower velocities, it will. And we can just say that our f equal to f naught times c plus v over c. And now we're getting pretty close, and we can go ahead and um, just make this a little bit simpler and call this f naught times 1 plus um, v over c. And I'm leaving a little bit of room here because there's a little bit more work that we got to do um, to get this right. First of all is to, is to consider the fact that we've had this, this um, lambda is, is going to change depending on what, si what this angle is that, I, that I'm at with respect to the movement of the object. So let's just go ahead and pick a, um, a label for theta, a number for theta here. So let's just say that this is like the unit circle. And so this angle here would be um, theta is equal to 0. And our angle up here, we'd have theta is equal to 90 degrees. And our angle down here would be theta is equal to 180 degrees um, for this angle up here. And um, let me just let's just go ahead and try something. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and throw in a cosine of theta here, and see if that works. And let's say in this case theta is equal to zero, and in this case theta e equal to zero, we, that cosine would just be um, one. Cosine of zero is one. So we'd have a bigger frequency because we'd be adding this. Um, it'd be bigger than f naught. And does that make sense? Well, um, it does because if la if our new lambda is less than lambda naught then our new frequency in this case is going to be um, greater than f naught. So, um, so that works. So um, that's this check. We can just, let's just throw a check mark here. That works out. And as far as this one up here, theta equals 90. Well, then we have cosine of 90 here. That's going to be 0. So we're just going to end up with our new f is equal to our old f because it's just going to be multiplied by 1. So in this case, we'd have um, f equals f naught, which, um, which checks out. So we'll get a, give a check mark over here. And in this case, theta equals 180. We plug that in here. That cosine of 180 is going to be negative 1. So we've got a new frequency that's going to be less um, than 1 times f naught. So it's going to be less than f naught. And that actually makes sense. So for this case over here, f is less than f naught. And this checks out, too. So we're um, looks like we're good. Uh, one other thing we got to throw in here, though, is that if we're talking about a, a radar um, Doppler effect, we actually have this effect happens twice. So we're going to actually have to throw in a 2 here because this effect happens on the, on the radar's way to the target and on the way back. So two times we get that 2, and that's, this is really it. Um, there's a couple other versions that you may see with this. Um, one other version is going to be if... Um, we instead of instead of thinking as theta as going from zero to one eighty in this case, we just think of it as between zero and ninety, and then we take into account whether that object is moving toward or away generally. So in that case, we've got a different equation. So f is going to equal f naught times one plus or minus two v cosine theta over c, and that plus is going to correspond to when that target and the 
observer are converging, and that minus is going to correspond to when they're diverging, generally are going are going apart. So that's um, that's another way to look at it. And um, of course, there's um, w w um, one other important thing to take from this is what that V is, right? Because when the the policeman's shooting his radar gun at you, again, he's looking for your velocity. Typically, you're, you're, that's what you're trying to solve for, that, that velocity. So let's just go ahead and draw that equation up here. So that's going to be um, V is equal to C times F minus F naught all over 2 F naught cosine of theta. And this is... Um, Perhaps the, um, the most useful equation you'll have for the Doppler effect if you're trying to solve for that speed. So that is our, um, our loose sort of a derivation for how we get this um, equation to find the velocity given a shift in the wavelength and frequency due to the Doppler effect. So hopefully that was helpful, and until next time, take care.